Hey guys, this is Down Phoenix, and welcome back to what I'm playing. Today we're going to be taking a look at a phenomenal game that's came out over 10 years ago, but has aged quite well, and I felt it was time to check it out again. Today we are playing Mirror's Edge. Mirror's Edge is brought to us by EA and developed by DICE. Now, whenever people hear the words EA nowadays, they usually cringe and shudder because we know that EA has had a lot of problems this generation, but it seems like that they're starting to get it and starting to turn things around and hopefully next generation we will see the fruits of that labor. But I wanted to of course talk about that because Mirror's Edge came out during a time when gamers still appreciated EA and knew that they could still put out good games, at least most gamers. I guess there's always been people that never liked EA, and uh, they've always done questionable things. They like to close down game studios a lot and just do really terrible things in some cases, like of course the online pass thing that they did last generation. But Mirror's Edge is not a game that is held down by any of these EA problems that we've came to pass in recent times. To simply explain Mirror's Edge, it is a first-person adventure parkour game where you're playing as Faith, who is a runner, and basically these runners are used as messengers in order to relay information, and deliver packages, and things like that in a dystopian futuristic world that is controlled by a powerful government agency that is colluding, of course, with various corporations in order to maintain control over the populace. One of the defining features in Mirror's Edge, in my opinion, is the design of the levels themselves. Because this game has a very intelligent way of placing the obstacles and objects and everything like that that you're going to have to encounter as you're platforming and running through these stages. As you'll notice, there are certain objects that are highlighted in red. Typically when you get close to them, that's to give you an indication of where to go, which is very important since it's not always clear on what you should do and where to go. That being said though, even though it's kind of a linear game, there can be multiple ways to address your traversal through the environment. In addition to the platforming, exploration, and parkour that you're going to have in this game, you also will have some combat as well. Now the combat is not utilized very often. There's only certain sequences through the game where you actually are supposed to be involved in a combat experience, and most of the time you can actually avoid these combat scenarios entirely as long as you're effective with your ability to escape the enemies. But that being said, it is important to know that you do have some different melee attacks that you can utilize, as well as the ability to disarm enemies. And then there is also a slow motion feature, which typically you're only gonna use for these combat scenarios, but it allows you to slow down time to make it much easier to disarm enemies. And of course, once you disarm them, you can take matters into your own hands and start blasting away with the gun that you just took from them, taking out any possible enemy threats. Unfortunately, the combat is a bit of a miss mark in this game, because although it does encapsulate a great break from the platforming experience, it isn't quite as smooth, especially considering this is EA Dice. These are the people that made the Battlefield games, which has really excellent feeling combat. And this is not the same case here. Now that's not to say that the combat is bad, it's fine in this game, but it's not something that the game should be built upon. If you're someone that really likes 
combat first person shooter type games you might be disappointed here because it just doesn't play as smoothly as a lot of other games but it's still plenty functional and you shouldn't have any trouble getting through the game especially given that you really don't have a lot of combat sequences that you have to deal with in this game and I did kind of enjoy the variety of different attacks that you could use on the enemies the melee attacks you can do jump kicks and slide kicks and you know all kinds of stuff like that you know jumping punches so you have a lot of variety in the maneuvers but it could have played out a lot better in my opinion at the same time so just keep that in mind One of the highlights of this game is definitely the visual presentation. It is very striking, it is very stark, it is very beautiful. And keep this in mind, this game is coming on 12 years old now. And it still looks very crisp, very clean. Especially if you're playing it on PC, of course, where you can take full advantage of 60 plus frames per second. And up the graphic settings and whatnot, and of course, even like a moderately built PC shouldn't have no problem running this game maxed out and of course there's also full backwards compatibility with Xbox one you could play this on the Xbox one X and play it in 4k and this game just has a very nice striking color palette everything is designed in a clean fashion you know there's not any kind of muddy textures we don't have a lot of brown hues and things like that like we often saw during last generation seeing games like Gears of War and Call of Duty. This game uses very striking color palettes and that's why it definitely still looks really good to this day in my opinion compared to some of those games. Uh, that being said, some of the textures and whatnot are kind of low resolution. You can tell sometimes when you look up close. But for the most part, it has an excellent appearance. And if you're playing on PC using an Nvidia graphics card, you'll definitely get some really cool physics effects when it comes to like different flaps flying around and the glass breaking and things like that so it definitely has some nice visual flares and touches and the lighting of course is really good stuff too it's very strong uh has a lot of lens flare and bloom lighting going on and it just it just looks great this game looks fantastic still to this day you know it still looks as good as it did way back in the day You're going to die a lot in this game if you don't know what you're doing. It is a very challenging game, but that being said, there are multiple difficulty settings, so you can kind of tailor it in a way to your taste, but you do have to grasp the core mechanics of the game in order to succeed regardless of the difficulty. You have to get used to the controls, which are kind of unusual for this kind of game, it uses almost entirely the shoulder and trigger buttons on a gamepad, so it's definitely unconventional compared to a lot of games of this style. And it's also fair to say that this game isn't exactly just a platforming or running kind of game. There is a very strong argument that can be made for it also being kind of a puzzle game in a way, because you're going through a lot of various environmental puzzles in order to get around the objectives in order to be able to progress. Sometimes you have to hit switches in order to stop fan blades so that you can get, you know, across. You have to jump across the trains at certain times. There's all kinds of different environmental puzzles that you're going to utilize throughout the course of this game. And even though I did say it was a platforming slash parkour kind of game, it is kind of a puzzle game as well. A very fast-paced puzzle game that takes a lot of mastery of the controls instead of being more of a traditional puzzle game where you have to fit pieces or all kinds of crazy stuff like that. Shit, the booth is stopping trains in the tunnels now. 
There's a train coming behind you. Get the hell out of there. Though this game isn't really expansive in terms of story, in between stages you do have cutscenes that look kind of like this that play through it. And it's a really odd choice because for the most part these cutscenes don't look as good as the game. Like how often do you see a video game where the cutscenes actually look worse than the in-game graphics? Now some of the art like the environments and things like that do look really, really nice, but when it comes to characters moving around, it almost looks like one of those e-surance commercials. I don't know if you guys remember that from way back in the day. Those weird flash cartoon looking commercials that would play on TV, you know, because back then people watched TV. And they just looked real goofy and for some reason they use that style for this game. I didn't really understand why they would do that because the in-game graphics simply looked a lot more pleasant and it just seems like they should have used that to tell the story in my opinion. You do get a variety of unlockables including artwork and of course you can rewatch those cutscenes but the highlight is definitely the music which has an excellent soundtrack and great ambiance. Let's have a listen guys. Perhaps you have to play through the game to get an appreciation for that, but I really dig it and it's a very nice extra to have when you just don't feel like playing the game but you want to hear some excellent tunes that this game provides. For me, Mirror's Edge checks all the right boxes on what makes a spectacular and yet unique AAA experience that doesn't feel like the traditional mainstream game. This feels more like an indie art project of a lot of passion and a lot of work poured in and it really has a strong vibe and it's really perplexing in my opinion that we really haven't had very many games in this type of gameplay like this is not a genre that's really been emulated it's really weird because most everybody I know that's played this game absolutely loves it and for whatever reason, it's pretty much unanimous consent that Mirror's Edge Catalyst, which was a sequel released several years later on the current gen systems, isn't nearly as loved. And I kind of got that same vibe as well. I didn't really play a whole lot of it because it just didn't feel right. It didn't feel like this game did, you know, and I don't know, man. This is just one of my favorite games of the last console generation, definitely in the top 10 more likely in the top five just very well polished and very excellent and aged very well now that being said it's not perfect of course uh, i have noticed some scenarios where it seems like the controls don't work exactly like you want them to or perhaps like the way the environment is laid out that it's just a little bit off like it seems like you should have made that jump but you didn't according to the game it's kind of a weird vibe but i guess if you're really into this game and you really get good at it then you're really not going to notice that problem and it's meant to be a challenging and fun thrill ride very short game probably will take you about maybe five or six hours for your first playthrough so it's not entirely a hard game to play through uh, given that context you know and i just really really love this game <laughs> I hope you guys can understand that, you know, it's just one of the most unique games that I think we've ever seen 
from an EA studio of any kind. And it's just mind-boggling considering how mainstream and corporate we know EA to be. That they allow this to happen. Somehow. <laughs> but um, I hope this game lives on. As you can see when I was talking about the controls. Some of those jumps I thought I should have made. But I clearly didn't at the same time. But yeah, Mirror's Edge. High marks all around. Not a perfect game, but it's not far either. It's definitely on the edge of perfect, I would say. So, if you guys play this, let me know what you think. I really want to know your thoughts on it. And if you want to check this game out, two bucks on Steam right now. You can't go wrong, guys. You can't go wrong. And obviously, you can do the Steam refund if you absolutely hate it. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I just want to hear you guys' thoughts on it. And if you enjoyed this video, let me know in the comments below. And if not, same. But until next time, Dow Phoenix signing out. I was too young to remember exactly how it started. The authorities said the changes were for the greater good. But good isn't the same as right.